Uh, dear students, today I am posting my next video on applications of electronic engineering in which I am going to start with the third chapter that is audio systems and in that we are going to see first what is a microphone and what are the features of microphone. So let us see that the, today's topic is microphones. Now it is a transducer which simply converts sound energy into electrical energy. So here you can see a basic definition. A microphone or in short form it is called as mic is a device. It is a transducer that uh, captures audio by uh, converting sound waves into an electrical signal. So sound waves are converted into electrical signal. That is the basic work of this transducer, which is called as microphone. Now, here you can see whenever the sound waves are going to incident on the microphone, there will be a, a diaphragm in that, and that a diaphragm will convert that sound pressure or velocity into mechanical wave energy. Now, that mechanical wave energy will be converted into electrical energy by the microphone. Okay. So, if you go into the process little depth, you can see that sound pressure or velocity which will hit the or diaphragm will be converted into a mechanical movement and that mechanical movement will be converted into electrical energy by some means or by some principles used according to the types of microphones. That is how sound energy will be converted to electrical energy in a microphone. Now here you can see a microphone image a picture. Now in this picture here the sound is going to incident. This is the part where the sound is going to incident. Then the sound inside will affect a mechanical movement of a diaphragm. Here you can have a diaphragm and that diaphragm with some principle that mechanical movement will be converted that vibration of the diaphragm will be converted into electrical movement and here you can see your electrical energy going out. So electrical energy and in the end you can have your either wires or you can have wireless mics. So you can have either your wires which can carry the electrical energy or you can have wireless mics where the uh, electrical energy will be transmitted in air in the form of electromagnetic wave. Okay. So or in the form of infrared or any other waves. Now this is the image of a mic one, one of the type it is not that all mics look like this. So you can have many different types of mics. Now microphone can capture audio in several different ways. Therefore, multiple classes of microphones exist. That is, uh, once you convert your sound energy into a mechanical wave, mechanical movement, then from there, there are very many ways by which you can convert that mechanical into electrical. Okay. So, depending on that way, you can have types of microphones. Okay, like you can have a carbon microphone, you can have crystal microphone, you can have dynamic microphone, you can have ribbon microphone, etc. Okay. Now, there are many types of mics and they nearly all utilize a diaphragm or diaphragm will be there inside most of the mics which reacts with the sound. Once it, once it reacts with the sound, it will convert into a mechanical movement and that mechanical movement will be used to be converted into an electrical energy. So, there are many types of mics and they nearly all utilize a diaphragm which reacts with sound, transducer element which converts energy and circuitry is there after that which carries and outputs the mic signal that is the electrical signal which will be amplified and given to the output. Now based on the principle in which you are going to convert the mechanical movement into electrical energy that is as a whole if you speak sound energy is converted into electrical energy. If you if it, it depends on many types of ways, there are many ways by which you can do it and depending on those ways, depending on those methods, we can classify microphones and uh, in that a few I have named here, 
one is a carbon microphone second one is dynamic microphone third is crystal microphone fourth is capacitive microphone and fifth is ribbon microphone etc and there are many others where the uh, methods will make the name of that microphone the uh, different methods used will ultimately give that name to that microphone but ultimately all the microphones are converting sound energy to electrical energy the electrical energy a microphone is concerned with is in the form of audio signals now what are audio signals okay audio audio signals are ac electrical signals with frequencies within the audible range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz this frequency is important 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay now this is a audible frequency range this is a audible frequency range which is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay now this, this is a range of frequency within which the signals can be heard by a human being. It is a limitation with respect to a human being who can hear the signals within this range that is frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and this range is called as audible frequency range. Okay. Now we will go to see the features of microphones. First is frequency response. Frequency response means for what type of frequencies the microphone will respond what type of frequency input the sound waves what it goes what how much is the range of frequency for which the microphone will response or the microphone will give its electrical energy okay from low to high that range will be the frequency response of microphone okay now here as a definition you can see a microphone's frequency response refers to the range of frequencies from low to high that a microphone will pick up from low to high that is that a microphone will pick up it should be able to pick up that frequency range and convert into electrical and give it out this range is referred to by its lowest and highest frequencies measured in hertz a microphone with a frequency response range of around 80 hertz to 15 kilohertz would make a good choice for a vocal mic so most of the microphone manufacturers uh, expect that the frequency range is flat for a uh, almost a larger frequency range and that the mic works for more frequency range okay so that is how you can find out the frequency response of a microphone second is the output impedance the output impedance is very important because it will tell us where we can join the output of microphone the next stage the next circuit whichever we are having whether it is a pre-amplifier amplifier okay so there when we are going to connect our microphone output to that at that time at that interfacing the output impedance plays a very important role okay so here as a definition you can see microphone signals are ac voltages impedance is the ac resistance of audio signal voltages impedance controls the flow of the audio signal in order for a mic signal to travel optimally the microphone output impedance must match this is very important must match or bridge the input impedance of the next stage of the next stage that is input impedance or the load impedance of the mic pre-amplifier that is the amplifier stage which you are going to connect after the mic output to amplify the mic output now that there the input impedance of that amplifier should match with the output impedance of microphone this is a measurement of ac resistance looking back into the microphone generally microphones can be divided into low that is 50 to 1000 ohms medium 5000 to 15000 ohms and high 20000 and above ohms impedance then the third feature comes as directivity sound from which directions can be picked up by the microphone and can be converted into electrical energy so sometimes a microphone works for a particular direction sometimes a microphone can work for all direction sounds okay so here the definition goes as microphones can have different sensitivity levels in different directions the microphone directional characteristics are important in making sure the microphone can be used used can be it can pick up all the sounds that are needed 
okay so all the sounds in that particular effective area are picked up that will give you the directivity of the microphone then fourth will be the diaphragm size a diaphragm size will be a layer okay which will be uh, a converting the sound waves into mechanical movement okay so microphones with different diaphragm sizes have different characteristics a diaphragm can be small in size or large in size or depending upon the application and the microphone and depending on that they have different characteristics and are therefore often used in different applications fifth feature will be sensitivity of microphone microphone sensitivity is measured of a microphone's efficiency as a transducer how well how nicely it can convert sound energy that is acoustical energy to electric energy so even if the sound is less or high how nicely it is going to convert if it is able to pick up the lowest sound of its sensitivity will be more okay a microphone's sensitivity rating is determined by its output voltage audio signal strength are related to the sound pressure level it is subjected to then sixth feature is the output level the output of the microphone uh, governs the amount of amplification that must be available for use with microphone the output level of microphone is usually given in the units decibels okay now that is a factor which is going to a govern or see the amount of amplification that must be available for the use with microphone that is the output level feature of microphone okay so these were the six features important features what we have taken of microphone or oh, thank you students